Now at 11, space weather threatening to create some trouble for us here on Earth. Yeah, this is unusual. A spike in solar activity has scientists issuing their first severe geomagnetic storm watch in nearly 20 years. News 6's Treasure Roberts is live with us in studio tonight with a closer look at how this could impact us right here at Treasure. Yeah, Ginger Matt, it might sound scary, but don't get too worried. I'll share some tips for how you can protect your everyday appliances. But first, you might be wondering what exactly is a solar storm? It's basically just like a violent eruption from the sun. A rare G5 solar storm, also known as a geomagnetic storm, is hitting Earth for the first time in nearly 20 years. Those flashes of light, those are those solar flares that we were talking about. Zachary Malhot, the science program specialist at the Orlando Science Center, breaks down what causes it and what the storm could mean for us. Kind of think of it a bunch of wires, like a bundle of headphones, continuously nodding and nodding forever. And when the nodding gets too intense and the energy kind of builds up, it'll snap off and it will kind of just send massive amounts of electrons into the solar system. So what does that energy do to the Earth? Yeah, so what it does is it crashes into our magnetic sphere um, and that's very, very good for us, right? Luckily we have a magnetic sphere. If we didn't have it, all of that energy and radiation and photons would just bombard the planet and we would all kind of be cooked as if we were in a microwave. He says all that energy creates what many call the northern lights. But experts say that energy could cause some disruptions to communication systems. There could be some infrastructure Effect. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says the storm could impact power grids, satellite navigation, and high-frequency radio communications, or even household appliances like your microwave, stove, or dishwasher. Experts recommend turning off the breaker to those appliances rather than unplugging them. But there's good news. So a lot of people are wondering, are we going to see the lights in the sky? Is that a possibility for people in Central Florida? Yeah, so it's going to reach pretty close to Central Florida. Well, that's crazy. Oh, I'm still, I've lived here a long time. Yeah. And this would be a first treasure. You have a little experience with the Northern Lights. I'm a newbie, but I just got some experience a couple months ago in Iceland. That's I was crazy. Beautiful. so excited to see the Northern Lights. Yeah. Uh, was it everything you thought it would be? I mean, it was amazing. It was crazy, though, because they, they move. I didn't think that they move. You look one way and they're gone. Oh, wow. So you have to take that picture as soon as possible. You're <laughs> supposed to be bundled up like that to yes. see the Northern Lights. <laughs> yeah. But we are getting pictures yeah. of people who say this is in wow. Cocoa, Florida. Look at that pink hue there. They're definitely wearing t-shirts. We've gotten several pictures from several different people of folks saying they think they're seeing the Northern Lights out there that tonight. That is unusual. That's beautiful, wow. though. So, so, Tom, do we have to be near the coast to see it? Is that Well, I, I think what's going on is that in the city, we're too bright. Yeah. yeah. I think you have to be out where too it's dark. You were pollution, way out yeah. in the middle of nowhere so where it was dark, no dark, dark. Mm -hmm. So light pollution is eating up most of what we're able to see across the interior. But the people down on the coast are seeing it. It's killing me. You oh, my gosh. That no, here? and I've wanted to go so badly. Okay. And I, well, Treasure and I talked. Got to take a field trip. <laughs> got to get out and go to Iceland. <laughs> got to do it tonight. Or at least Michigan. Do it the way Treasure did it in Iceland. Yeah.